Stabilize. Shutting down. Crumble! people around anymore. Looks like that boat we took to Araneus might have been the last one. The shame. Hmm. Looks like we're back here again. Huh? Traveler? Are you... Ugh. That's kind of spooky. Are you sure we don't want to come back in the morning? The shame? The shame. Huh? Hang on. 
Simon can kind of hear a voice. It's calling for Vashi, right? Hey, Traveler? Stop walking! Come on, wake up! <sighs> Vashe, are you my dear Vashe? No, wait. You seem to be someone else. You know, Vashe. You know where my love is. I'm... Wait. Who am I? I'm very sorry. I fear I do not know. My memories feel like they have been washed away like a flood. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide, never to be recovered. How much have I lost? How many things that I once held dear while on land have I since forgotten? Yes, that is what I was once. But now, I am but the consciousness of one who has lost their form. I do not know how I came to be like this either. I only vaguely remember being covered in light blue water. And then all grew dim. I also remember going to many places. I loved adventure, loved exploring places of peril. And no matter where I went, Vashe would go with me. I knew how dearly he loved me. And I also loved him equally as much. But now, we can no longer go back. The pain of such parting. I never knew how heavy it could be. No, our reunion no longer has any meaning. There is no way for us to create any new memories. The thought of me gives him no succor. So let it lie forgotten beneath the waters. If you meet Vashe, tell him not to look for me. Tell him to move on. That is the only thing I still remember. Perhaps that is so. As I was submerged in the waters, losing consciousness, I saw Vache above the surface. His eyes were filled with such sorrow, such longing. If only I could have comforted him, told him that I did not suffer. Indeed, I had felt a great warmth. Is that what you call it? Dissolving? If anything, I consider it a form of release. It was a state of neither fear nor frenzy, with only an endless peace. Like the water still surface. I could also liken it to being a thirsty person who drinks water for the first time and only then sees how they have lived for so long in a world of endless want and anxiety. I think I hear your companion. It's time for you to go, I think. Farewell then. I am glad that you were able to sense my presence. Remember, if you see Vashe, tell him not to seek me out any longer. of Gardamax. Uh, Chlori, 
hand? I should thank you for lending us your sword there, Clorand. But before I do so, could you explain how you managed to show up here? I... followed you. It seemed to me that danger has followed you more closely as of late. I believe that following someone without their knowledge is actually called stalking, is it not? Mr. Callus' last wish was for me to ensure your safety, and I will not betray his trust. He would do the same, were he alive today. Do not speak of my father! Sorry, demoiselle. I was not strong enough. Thank you for your aid, Miss Coran, but do keep an eye out for your manner of speech. I believe we all wish to avoid unnecessary emotional harm. Sorry, I... did not consider your feelings. Whatever. What else do you know? How did you come to the conclusion that I'd be in grave danger? I doubt I know much more than you, but I believe that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances is very powerful. Your performance tonight will almost certainly attract their attention. Huh. I'm sure they've known about me. To be honest, I'm shocked it's taken them this long to act against me. And what about these Gardamax? I thought only those associated with the Maison Guardianage could control them. None of these mecha have serial numbers. I was sure to check a moment ago. They are not the ones used by the authorities to enforce the law. I can only conclude that some powerful or wealthy party must have obtained them via illegal means, deploying them as a private force of sorts. What? Your point being that they're out of Spina di Rosula's league then? Yes. Be careful. And do not act rashly. I will continue investigating, no matter what. We will bring the truth to light. That's my father's true last wish. <sighs> Regardless, thank you for your help today, Clarant. But if you get any ideas, tell me first. I don't much appreciate being followed. I do not think that they'll strike again anytime soon. So I shall stop following you. Good day, all. Right. I suppose that's the best news we've gotten today. Demoiselle, I believe that Miss Clorand was being sincere with you. If we tried, we could attempt to thaw relations a little. I know, I just... She's... Uh... That champion duelist named Clorin, you came out to save us too! We got lucky there. Paimon probably couldn't have fought them off otherwise. Oh, <laughs> come now. Forget all that polite talk. That wasn't really a farewell meal we had back there. Not for me, anyway. In truth, I hope that every meal we have together shall be a victory feast. As such, we're still partners. There's no need to thank me. It will take 50 years for me to match Demoiselle's magnanimity. 
If it were me, I would have joined the Spina di Rosula on account of her goodwill long ago. <laughs> All right, you two. That's enough. Actually, Navia, how did you know that we were in danger? You sure did show up in the nick of time. Well, to be honest, you're the one who tipped us off, Paimon. Huh? Really? Paimon contributed somehow? Cool, Paimon's even more amazing than she thought us! Yes, all thanks to you grabbing my drink by mistake. Uh, how did that help? After we parted ways, I was on the way back to one of our bases when I suddenly thought of what you said. That the Fanta tasted kind of salty and icky? Fanta only comes in sweet flavors, so how could it have tasted salty? The color of the drink, if I recall, had also been a bit off. So the Fanta had been spiked with water from the primordial sea? Yes. So, if you hadn't drunk that cup for me... Spina di Rosula is preparing the grandest of awards for you as we speak for saving the boss. people to Hotel de Boer to investigate, but whoever did this left no trace at all. That's when I figured out that you might be in danger and hurried here as quickly as I could. But why would they go after us too? All we did was defend Linny and Court and help clear his name! Oh, now we're caught up in this mess too, aren't we? Well, you did foil a plan that they were probably pretty proud of, and almost got their name in the process. Speaking of which, did anything strange happen when you drank the primordial seawater? Well, it can't be a coincidence that the Traveler fainted just now. He said that he heard that voice calling for Vashe again. Oh, and this time Paimon heard it too, but it was real faint. Does, does that mean the primordial seawater raises someone's sensitivity to Hydra when it's used on people who are not from Fontaine? That doesn't sound like too much of a bad thing, to be honest. New intel? While you were out cold? Uh, well, let's hear it, shall we? Oh, that is important. Vache, that name doesn't ring a bell. I suppose he hasn't stepped forward as a witness in court lately. Since he saw that young woman dissolve, he was at least at the crime scene. But he never gave testimony or any information regarding people dissolving in the primordial seawater. Could he have been... threatened? Yes, thank you. This is very important information indeed. We will continue to investigate. You mean, you'll help us investigate? Well, you did say that our farewell meal didn't really count. That means we're still partners, right? And besides, we're in this now whether we like it or not. You're not gonna let those people who targeted us get off the hook so easily, are you, Traveler? Demoiselle, do try not to look quite so pleased. You are the face of Spina di Rosula, after all. <laughs> you talk too much. Well, in that case, let's head back to one of our bases, shall we? I'll arrange accommodations for you. We also have some plans to go over, and hopefully we can deepen our bonds as partners. But we'll take that one step at a time, I guess. Don't worry, you two. With us around, our base is definitely secure.
it's right up ahead. But let's make sure we weren't followed first. I've been keeping watch, Demoiselle. I haven't spotted anyone suspicious thus far. Huh. Very good. But let's not let our guard down for now. I shall find rooms for our respected guests. Thank you, Malus. Now, let's continue, Traveler. This is your base? It's not quite what Paimon imagined. Your accommodations have been arranged. Under the present circumstances, I can confidently say it's the best we have. <laughs> well, our funds have been a little tight lately. After all, we don't allow illegal or unethical profiteering. In fact, our funds often come from citizenry who support us. Seems like it's tough times for everyone. But if you have the support of the people, that does sound like it's worth it. <sighs> to be honest, our financial situation was a lot better back when my father was in charge a few years ago. <sighs> I'm afraid I'm not quite his equal. Your father? He was the previous boss of Spina di Rosula, right? How did he... Uh, Demoiselle, if you'll allow me to explain. Uh, no. I I'll explain it myself. I suppose I couldn't run from this topic forever. And, as partners, this is something I hope they can understand. My father's name is Callus. Yes, the same one they call Callus the Unfaithful in the streets. Three years ago, he was accused of murdering his own friend. But he chose a duel to defend his honor instead of standing trial. He died in the duelist ring. But I do not believe my father was a murderer. I'm sure he was set up. At the time, I believed that if he only stood trial and was duly investigated, something amiss would crop up and prove his innocence. But strangely, he not only requested the duel himself, but rumor has it that even after being seriously injured, to the point where he could be deemed as having lost the duel, he refused to surrender, determined to die in the arena. <sighs> Three years later, I still don't understand why he did that. How could he protect his honor if he's dead? <laughs> if anything, he gave up his chance to defend himself. The closest piece of info I have is that my father had been investigating the serial disappearances case at the time of his death. Ah, so that's why you're so determined to get to the bottom of that case. That's right. I've also tried to investigate the murder my father was implicated in. 
But I haven't found a single new clue in my countless reviews of the investigation records. However, I believe that if the murder case is related to those behind the disappearances, they must know something. I must know what really happened. Was my father coerced? Framed? Even if he really did kill his friend, I must get to the truth. <sighs> if only he'd been more open with me when he was still alive. He even hid the fact that my mother died due to complications when giving birth to me. And now, here I am investigating his death. <laughs> you really are a handful, aren't you, Papa? Demoiselle, please. If there is anything I can do, anything at all. I also will never believe that Master Callus murdered anyone. There are none whom I respect more than the two of you, Demoiselle. Master Callus did so much good in life, yet all it took was one murder case for him to be dubbed Callus the Unfaithful. Even our supporters decreased greatly due to that incident, hence our strained finances at present. Wait! If Callus was such a good man, wouldn't people at least be a little suspicious when he was accused? Uh, no. Perhaps people just revel in that kind of drama. It's not something exclusive to people from Fontaine, really. Everyone's like that. People love watching the evil turn over a new leaf, but they also enjoy watching good people fall into an abyss from one slip-up just as much. But how could... Uh, never mind. If Callus was really falsely accused, we have to find the truth. He didn't deserve to have that happen to him. And there is one other thing. Master Callus's opponent in the duel was Ms. Coran. Oh, her? Well, then, isn't that as good as saying that she was the one who killed him? Yeah, that's not the sort of thing that you can just let go and move on from. Miss Corand has always placed great emphasis on the honorable nature of the duel. If her opponent doesn't yield, she will not stop either. She knew Master Callus beforehand and greatly respected him, but seeing how he was resolute in the arena, there was only ever one choice she could have made. It's not that I don't understand her at all, but I... I just can't deal with this yet. Don't worry, Navia. Hyman knows how you feel. You don't have to force yourself to do that. Afterward, Miss Coran told us that at the start of the duel, Master Callus requested that she ensure Demoiselle Navia's safety. Yes, that is our understanding as well. <sighs> oh, Papa. What madness drove you to ask the person who killed you to take care of me? All right, anyway, that's the information I wanted to share with you. Even if it did sound like I was just complaining towards the end. Uh, thanks. You two should go and rest. This was quite a day after all. Yeah! I want to eat. Please, relax and get some sleep. We will ensure you rest soundly. Poisson. It's Spina de Rosula's place of origin, and where we have our headquarters. There's not much for them to do here at the moment. Paimon gets the feeling that you're just trying to get them off your back. But never mind that. When did you get back? Were you waiting here the whole time? No, I just returned after going out for a while. 
I did some investigating yesterday regarding the name Vache. Wait, so you didn't sleep at all? <laughs> How could I after having such critical new evidence appear? Uh, guess Paima wasn't speaking for everyone just now, huh? Uh, unfortunately, this name seems to have been wiped from existence. It doesn't seem to have a match anywhere. I suspect that those behind this have already taken steps to hinder an investigation from this angle. But that does prove that this Balshe person is a key witness in the incident. Does that mean we're too late, though? No. There is one ray of hope. One place in Fontaine that they would find almost impossible to threaten. No matter how much they wanted to. And that is the archives kept by Chief Justice Nouvellet, a place where detailed files on all the cases in recent years are kept. If the Oceanet you met is one of the young women who went missing recently, we should be able to find some related information there. So Nouvellet maintains an archive of case files? Whew. Guess that's the hardworking Chief Justice for you. In that case, let's go talk to him, shall we? Um... Hmm? Aren't you coming along, Nadia? Did you get tired? Uh, no, it's nothing. Let's go see the Honorable Chief Justice. The Chief, Chief Justice, Justice is presently occupied with official matters. Huh. This place does, does look pretty heavily guarded. Guess that proves that none of us files are really secure. Hey, don't, don't you recognize, recognize us? Huh? Who are you? Just, Just to be clear, <clears throat> I don't, don't care who you are or who you might be related to. Our rules, rules make, make no exceptions. See? They've, They've got, got great, great discipline, discipline, too. Yep, yep. yep. I can tell. tell. If, if you're, you're here just to crack jokes, I can, can point you towards the exit. Unlike, unlike some, we're busy. busy. So, so please, please make sure that you don't have a reason to be here. here. Uh, no, no, no. What, what I meant to say is, shouldn't you remember us from a few days ago? We were, we were at the, the trial of the great magician Lenny. Oh, oh, yes, yes I, I remember. I read about that in the Steambird. You, you must be Lenny's attorneys. Uh, it's, it's all coming, coming back to me now. We're, we're here today to report in our archives some information on a follow-up case. case. Huh, is that even a thing? Hmm. Of course. Don't worry. We're, we're here on official, official business. business. Trust us. All oh, right, then, I'll let you through. The Chief Justice is just inside. Ah, thanks, thanks so much. much.
Please come in. It's all right. Please, Please let, let me know, know how I may be of assistance to you. Uh, so you're not Matters? We are looking for a man called Bakshay. He may have been an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. If we can find him, we may be able to unearth some key information on the case. Ah, I see. In that case, please wait here a moment while I browse through the files. Unfortunately, I am quite certain that no one by the name of Ashe has been involved in any case, criminal or civil, in the past several years. There are no records of him either in the files or in my memory. Trailer? What if it was really just a dream? Is that so? All right, then. Thank, Thank you so much, Monsieur Nebulet. We'll take our lead now. Ahem. <clears throat> Miss Nabia, I can understand how you feel. Your father, Callus, was a truly exceptional man. We deeply regret his passing. Hmm. And what are you trying to say, Monsieur Novelet? Are you trying to console me? Extend your sympathy? Or just, or just express some tendril of regret. No. You are not trying to do any of that. I can hear it in your voice. There's no emotion behind your words. You only said those things because you felt like you should. It's just like last time. After my father took his place in the duelist ring, I pushed through the guards to talk to you as a last resort. You even told me then that you thought there was something fishy with the case, yet you still allowed the duel to go ahead. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. If you truly regret my father's death, then why didn't you call a stop to the duel? Why didn't you give me the power to stop him from throwing his life away? Why did you just let him die, despised and hated by all? Everything was hanging on a thread at that moment. Just the tiniest effort could have changed everything. There are still so many things I never got to tell him. So many questions he still owes me answers to. If you really have no heart, then just look me in the eyes. I Navia will show you the true meaning of regret. <sighs> I'm sorry, Miss Navia. You and my father are truly alike. You keep all kinds of things in your heart and never say a word to anyone. It's not so much that you can't feel, but that you would never express anything. Oh, well. In any case, everyone already knows full well the apathy of the Chief Justice. My apologies for taking my emotions out on you, Monsieur Chief Justice. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. Are you okay? 
I'm fine. Uh, rain. It's raining. You're right. Wasn't it still sunny when we went to the building? And there shouldn't be any active trials today. How strange. Now that I think of it, on the day my father was convicted of murder, it was also raining. Yeah, yeah, he, he was, was outside. outside. It, it was uncovered and the rain, rain could fall, fall there. Why? Uh, do you think, think the rain could have affected the crime scene? That, that thought has occurred to us before. We've, We've even expanded the search area to try to account, account for that. But didn't find anything of value. Oh? Wait. Uh, you don't mean... mean The true murderer could have been turned into water? And then got washed away with the rain? Yeah! And if that's what had happened, then no one would have believed your dad, even if he slain with the Sophia authorities! I really think I found a true genius for our partner. <laughs> You're completely right! How did I not connect the dots earlier? Alright, let's go to Poisson. With this new lead in mind, we'll get to the bottom of my father's case for sure. Yeah, we're gonna make progress for sure this time! Do you wanna go with me now? Or do you wanna head over by yourself later? Great, let's go then. Be so surprised. Well, well they, they look, look like, like a ship. It's, it's actually Sina de Rosula's headquarters. My father was the one who asked for it to be built like this. Perhaps our taste and exterior design is the only thing we occasionally had in common. A gigantic and glamorous ship embodies discovery, opportunity, ambition, and conquest. It symbolizes Sina de Rosula's bright and limitless future.
apologies for the wait, Demoiselle, and our most important partners. You said before that you still had some business at the court. What brings you back to Poisson so quickly? Uh, about that. It's because my partner here reminds me of something really important. You see, what if my father's case had something to do with water from the primordial sea? You still remember, right, Belus? On that night it was raining? Yes, the case was quite similar to that of Mr. Linney's. Both were what you'd call impossible murders. Could you tell us a bit more about what happened before? Yeah, of course. Many years ago, something called synth began to gain popularity in Poisson. At a glance, it was a kind of drink that could excite your mood and produce many pleasant hallucinations. Yes, he did. Considering what we know now, it's almost certain that synth is created using water from the primordial sea. If you drink synth for an extended amount of time, you'll suffer many side effects, such as losing the ability to focus or control your emotions. And if you were to stop drinking it completely, you'll experience flashes of paranoia and anxiety while lacking energy to do anything. It's an extremely dangerous substance. As, As he oversaw Poisson, my father was compelled to put a stop to synth abuse and called for a complete ban of it. Boss's uncompromising attitude incurred the synth vendor's wrath, but no matter how much they threatened or bribed him, he refused to yield. Not only that, Boss became determined to find the mastermind behind the synth operation and put an end to the problem once and for all. Yes. But the enemy was very cunning. <laughs> so we could never get anything out of the dealers. All of them only sold the stuff and weren't privy to the rest of the operation. Recognizing that, my father decided to contact the dealers in secret and cultivate personal relationships with them. Finally, he was able to convince someone to become his informant. The man's name was Jacques. He felt greatly ashamed about his work after seeing many families destroyed by synth abuse. That night, my father hosted a banquet at his countryside estate. We planned to meet up and exchange information with Jacques over some food. But then, we heard two gunshots from the courtyard. We raced to the scene and found my father, still holding a gun, and Jacques, who was already dead on the ground. Sounds just like Lenny's case, doesn't it? In both cases, the culprit seemed obvious, but neither appeared to have any motive at all. Looking back on it, though, I now believe the most important clue was something we all overlooked at the time. There were pieces of clothing left at the scene. Precisely. It's all thanks to you that I made the connection now. Back then, we all just thought they were some costumes that Jacques used to disguise himself at the banquet. But, considering it now, it's almost certain that they belong to a third person at the scene. With one extra person, we'll also need to reconsider why the two shots were fired. You're right. We still don't know what happened. But my intuition tells me that we're on the right track to figuring it all out. I'm finally headed towards the truth. Jacques was an empathetic man who was infinitely remorseful for his past actions. It's unlikely that he turned on boss with zero warning. I think this third person is probably the key to the full truth. On that note, however, even though this will not please you, Demoiselle, as you're and your father's butler, I must still offer a word of warning. Our opponent is insidious and cruel. They are extremely difficult to deal with, and the boss has already lost his life trying to bring them to justice. Even though Spear de Rosula has lost most of its former glory, Poisson has welcomed a new time of peace, and we have been allowed to live out our lives. There is no need to follow your father's path. It would be both wise and in line with boss's wishes 
to step back and give up on the case. If that's indeed what he wished for, then he should have told me that himself. Was I not the closest person to him? And yet I was the one most kept in the dark. What was the point of him dying without sharing any of the secrets he knew? Did he manage to protect anything in the end? Synth is still here. Hallis the Unfaithful is still his epithet. And Sina de Rosula is barely getting by. Nothing has changed. Did he think I just accept his meaningless death and live out my life just as meaninglessly? I've never accepted that, ever. Not since that day, and certainly not now. I want to find out the real answer for everyone's sake. For the missing girls, for the victims, and for myself. Nadia. This is indeed the best moment to act. Your partner appears to be quite reliable, and more importantly, Demoiselle, I think you're also ready to take this on. So you do know something else, Malus. Yes, I do. In fact, even before that banquet, Voss already knew of the connection between Synth and the serial disappearances case. But what drove all the tensions to the boiling point was the revelation that you, Demoiselle, had been selected as the next target to disappear. What? <sighs> Voss also didn't tell you that he had been diagnosed with a rare illness. The doctors told him that he had no more than five years left to live. And the serial disappearances case caused him great anxiety. Five years was nowhere near enough time to resolve this long-standing conflict. But once he passed away, all the danger would pass on to you. Knowing all of this, he decided to use one final intimidation tactic before his death. He claims to have already gotten his hands on some key incriminating evidence for the other side, and even told some members of Spina de Rosula about the details. But as long as you remain safe, he would not share the evidence with the public. If something were to happen to you, then he and all those he told would immediately expose all they knew about Synth and the disappeared victims. Right! So nobody would be able to go scot-free! As we've seen, Voss's tactic has worked. Even though Voss has been gone for a long time, the other side has not tried to take Demoiselle's life. No! I don't believe it! He never appeared to look sick to me! No father wants their daughter to see them weak and haggard, especially someone as proud as boss. To him, dying in a duel and suffering lasting dishonor as the unfaithful was still far preferable than losing face in front of his daughter. <laughs> so he chose to die in silence so that he could protect me. I'm afraid you're not understanding this correctly, Demoiselle. What Voss wanted to hand to you was not a parasol, but a sword. If Voss's spirit could hear you telling me that you want to find the answer for the sake of everyone involved, I'm sure he'd be extremely proud. Uh, that fool. <laughs> could he have just given it to me straight? No. no. He, he might, might have set up everything, everything precisely because he never thought I'd be able to understand him. Is that the amount of confidence he had in me? And what if I was never able to make it to where I am now? Yeah. I suppose that's true. With the way he set things up, if I had wanted, I could have just lived out my life without a care in the world. But thankfully... He rarely talked to me about complex matters, and thus understood little of me as a person. In this case, he really didn't need to give me an easy way out. <laughs> Malus, what was the key evidence that he shared with you? It's the location where synth is produced. Essentially, 
It's the enemy's headquarters. When he was threatening the enemy, boss didn't share the specifics of the incriminating evidence he found. But if you want to use it against the enemy, you'll still have to take several things into consideration. Why? If we know where the place is, can't we just storm in? You mustn't forget that we're fighting against a mysterious and dangerous organization that's been in operation for decades. There's no telling what might be lying in wait at their headquarters. We also have no idea what kind of evidence we may be able to find inside, nor what people we may be able to capture. But a single visit to their headquarters would be tantamount to a formal declaration of war. The worst case would be that we leave empty-handed, but also open ourselves up to full retaliation. Then, in that case, why not work with the Vontian authorities? Well, you saw one of them dissolve during Mr. Lenny's case. We have no idea just how thoroughly they may have been infiltrated. Huh. That's true. Seems my father really had no choice. But things are different now. It should be a lot easier to prove the other side guilt now that we've connected Sin with the disappearances case. You sound like you put a lot of thought into this, Moose. I am the butler, after all. I live but to serve the boss and the demoiselle's will. I've always been willing to take on any kind of risk for your sake. But considering my relative lack of ability, I've spent my time keeping secrets, performing basic investigations, and waiting for the right time to come. Thank you for all of that, Malus. Have you discovered anything new in the past few years? Let me think. One conclusion I came to was that the enemy must be quite familiar with the Spina de Rosula, or at least have an informant planted here. When I announced orders to the organization's members on Demoiselle's behalf, I used to deliberately keep a few people in the dark and observe the reactions of the Sith vendors. If the vendors didn't change their plans, then the individuals informed of our orders must be innocent. If the vendors acted and fled, however, then someone must have given them the news. After several rounds of testing and investigative tracing, I've narrowed the suspect list down to three people. The first is Moron, Spina de Rosula's senior advisor. Huh? Florong? Yes, surprising, isn't it? He was one of the people Boss trusted the most, which also means that he was someone who understood Boss really well. Thanks to his position within Boss's innermost circle, he always knew our upcoming plans and could thus avoid capture this whole time. There's someone else like him too. Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere. Uncle Marcel. It's a guild in Poisson. The boss helped it to grow to its current size and prominence. In the beginning, they were only reselling some daily goods, but now they're one of the richest guilds around with a lot of business connections in the city. So, they're like a sister organization of Spina di Rosula? Yes, you can say that. When we were fighting against the Sin Thielers, they provided us with plenty of support. It's a bit difficult to imagine someone using their own money to hunt down themselves. The final suspect is Skiri, the man responsible for coordinating information between Spina de Rosula and the guards. Although the guards mostly leave us to our own devices, there are still many activities we have to report to the local authorities. Since Skiri is always in the know about our current activities, he could theoretically always plan one step ahead. I see. These? are all people who I communicate with quite regularly. To think that the enemy we've been fighting against has been right next to me all along, among those I trust the most. It's almost too hard to believe. If you 
you want to investigate them, please take every precaution to not alert the quarry. Judging from our experience, the enemy is extremely cautious. Mm, of course. And thank you, Malus. You provided us with a lot of great information. You're too kind, my lady. I'm just doing my duty. And before I forget, uh, proving Boss's innocence would also mean clearing him of blame in Jacques' death. After that incident, Jacques' wife and daughter were taken to the Spina's care. They still live in Poisson today. If it might help, you could also pay them a visit. I can make the necessary arrangements. A new, new case, case awaits, my dear partner. partner. I, I hope, hope we can work together to uncover the truth and end this case once and for all. It is settled, then. Please excuse me, and enjoy your conversation at your leisure. Thank you for arranging everything for us, Melissa. Excuse me, miss. Do you need anything from us? I'm sorry, but I only came to visit after all this time. After what happened, I didn't know how I was supposed to face the two of you. Ah, if it's about that, there's no need to apologize. After my husband died, Spina di Ursula sent us a lot of mura and support. I understood your guilt and apology to be genuine. But... Aren't all of those things nothing compared to the loss of Jacques? I can understand the kind of pain that comes with losing a father so needlessly. You don't understand at all. I didn't know how to face you, because I didn't know what I could possibly bring as a consolation gift. I know only the full truth could bring closure to you, and to all of us. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I appreciate the sentiment, but you don't have to carry all that guilt. On the matter regarding my husband, my daughter and I have more or less found our answer already. 
but do you mind sharing it with me? I really can't believe that my father could ever bring himself to shoot Jacques. I always knew that my husband's money was earned through others' suffering. He told me countless times that if he could turn back the clock, he would never go into the synth business again. He had many regrets, and felt that he took the idea of providing for his family too literally. For the longest time, he thought Mora was everything. So when Mr. Callis came to him with a proposal, he accepted it almost immediately. He tried to be as careful as he could, but even so, he was still found out by the higher-ups. They found out about his betrayal? Papa didn't say that exactly, but Papa did tell me that I should never be ungrateful. Before he left that day, he told me that he had no choice. It was only later that I realized it was his final farewell to the two of us. I don't know that for sure, but you could say that's the conclusion I eventually came to. Which is why I'm the one who should feel guilty. Callus had always taken great care of us, both when he was still alive and after he passed away. Even if he fired the shot that killed my husband, it was likely in self-defense. It is impossible for me to hate him for what he had done. But Mama, why is Papa still the bad guy if he did the right thing? Papa always wanted to be a good man, so why did he have to do a bad thing in the end? Well, things aren't always as they seem. You still feel like your Papa was a good man, right? Yeah, Papa was a really good man. The, the best in the whole world. Then you should hold on to that. If a good man had to do a bad thing, then he must have had his reasons. Regardless of whether he left you a parasol or a sword, he must have done so to give you a better life. Oh, thank you for everything you've told me. I will definitely find the truth. The current state of things is not something I'm willing to just sit back and accept. I'm very grateful to hear this from you. Even though your personality is quite different from your father's, your determination when you speak is really similar. You really think so? That's the first time anyone said that to me. together all the way. So please don't worry. Greetings, boss. How may I be of assistance today? I'm sure you've heard of what happened at the Opera House. Someone got turned into water right in front of us. Yeah, I've heard. Something that dramatic? I'm sure journalists will milk it for all it's worth. And it'll be all the talk for the next several weeks. It also reminded me, on the day that the incident happened with my father, it was raining outside, and we found some clothes left at the scene. After my partner here put the dots together for me, I feel like we should try to reopen this case. Can you do me a favor and try to recall what happened that night? Hmm, let me think. Mr. Callis was feeling pretty upbeat that day. So he was drinking and bantering away with us at the table. After that, he told us that he wanted to go get some fresh air. So we let him go without thinking much of it. Who knew that we would hear two gunshots ring out right after? My first reaction was that Mr. Callis's life was in danger. 
So I grabbed my holster and made a mad dash toward the scene. But when I got there, it was already too late. Mr. Callis was standing over a dead body with a gun in his hands. All we could do was look back and forth at each other, not knowing what to say. So you also remember two gunshots then? Indeed. The guard said that the first shot didn't hit anyone, while the second killed Jacques. But I never really bought that explanation. Reason being, Mr. Callis had left his gun on the table. I even made sure to confirm that before running to the scene. But according to the guards, that doesn't mean he couldn't have had other guns on his person. About the clothes left at the scene that you mentioned, do you think there was a third person there who was turned into water? At least from our perspective, my father had no reason to kill. So he would also have no reason to bring in an extra gun with him. The gun he was holding probably belonged to Jacques, or a third person on the scene. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're saying Mr. Callis ended up with the gun because he seized it from one of the other guys? But hold on. If that's what had happened, then why didn't he share the truth with any of us? He didn't even want to face the Aura Trees machine and chose instead to prove his honor in a duel. Did he lose all faith in the course? After seeing someone dissolve right in front of his eyes? Mm, about that, Malus told me a thing or two. So, I think I can understand why he committed to the duel. I'll tell you everything once the whole truth has been revealed. I understand. Then, I'll leave Mr. Callus's honor in your hands, boss. And if I may just say one more thing. The whole callous, the unfaithful epithet has been a thorn in my side since the day it was invented. Many people have laughed at me for still calling him Mr. Callus, even after so many years have passed. But it was Mr. Callus's trust that allowed me to rise through the ranks of Spina di Rosula and live the life I lead today. No matter what others might say, he'll always be the man I respect the most. He'll always be my boss. Don't worry. I will definitely find the truth. You and all our other comrades at the Spina deserve to know the truth as well. It's me! Oh! Uh, now, what brings you here, Miss Navia? I've heard that you made quite the name for yourself at the Opera House. Oh! <laughs> so you caught news of that already? Oh, okay. Hey, I'm also a member of the Guards, you know. The way you make it sound, people would think I was sent off to Poisson because I had done something wrong. Are you sure there isn't a little bit of truth in that? Under normal circumstances, shouldn't you have been called back to the city already? <laughs> I mean, where I work is really up to me. Let's just say I enjoy the ambiance of Poisson. Callus did a fantastic job running the town, building Spina di Rasul from the ground up and clearing many obstructions in my way. It would be next to impossible for me to find a similarly easy but high-paying job in the city. Anyway, enough, enough chit-chat. Chit -chat. Are, are these two friends of yours? You, uh, here for some formal business? Ah, uh, yes. These two are my partners. What happened at the Opera House made us realize that Lillian's case and my father's may be related. We're 
you're trying to reinvestigate the details of my father's old case. Ah, I get it. You think there might be more to the case now that we know people can be dissolved into water, right? I was also flabbergasted when I first heard it. If you want to go through the original files from your father's case, I can help you look for them. That'd be much appreciated. Thank you. Actually, I have another question. Do you have the authority to dispatch Gardeness? Of course. Without them, I couldn't possibly handle Poisson on my own. Why do you ask? We definitely can't use them to forcefully get more evidence for your father's case. Well, you see, just recently, we were attacked by a horde of unnumbered Gardemex in the city. So, <laughs> if you hypothetically wanted to do something against me, all you would need to do was get rid of the Mecha serial numbers and send them after me. <laughs> Then you think too highly of my abilities. Dispatching Mecha is very different from controlling them. If I had to make an analogy, when you order a dish, the chef will make it for you. You can ask the chef to cook, but not to massage your shoulders or carry your baggage. If you try to make unreasonable demands, the chef would just think you're out of your mind and ignore you completely. The same goes for me and my Garnex. Removing a serial number is also not as easy as you might think. There are a lot of complex steps to it, and it's almost impossible to keep it a secret. So I can promise you, those Mecha were definitely private units. They're certainly not cheap. So, whoever their owner is must be super rich, powerful, or both. Now that you mention it, though, being in the synth business would definitely be profitable enough to afford this. Oh, <laughs> then you're officially in the clear, Thierry. <laughs> well, thank you for the vote of confidence, Navia. Jokes aside, I'd like to wish you all the best with your investigation. I'll be staying in the city for a little while, so just come find me if you need any support from the guards. Hello, how may I help you? I'm here to see Marcel. Could you please let him know? You can just say Navia is looking for him. Sure, I will let him know right away. Ah, uh, Navia, hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm not as young as I used to be, so my legs are giving out a bit. Oh, it's all right, Uncle Marcel. There's no need to stress. I just wanted to talk to you briefly about what happened in the Opera House. I'm sure you saw everything too, right? Yes, uh, I've never seen anything so strange. Oh, you were at the Opera House too? That's right. I went there with Navia to see the magic show. Who knew it would turn into a whole murder mystery? 
also witnessed your marvelous sleuthing work. Quite impressive. To beat the Hydro Archon at her own game on her own turf, I can already imagine everyone in Fontaine discussing your exploits over a few glasses of wine. Oh, Hilo doesn't want to become a top drunkard! <laughs> Apologies. It's just how Fontaine is as a nation. Everyone loves drama and theatrics. Uncle Marcel, you've also noticed that other thing, right? The fact that humans can dissolve in water? Yes, I was reminded of your father's case right away. Is that what you are investigating now? Exactly. I still don't have much solid proof, but I can sense that the other side has already begun to act. Oh, and what makes you say that? We were attacked on Aeneas by some unnumbered Garnax, and there was also an attempt to get me to drink water from the primordial sea. If not for the vigilance of my partner, I probably wouldn't even be here talking to you right now. Oh, you're giving us too much credit. Wasn't it you who protected us? Alas, it seems things are heating up again. The peace that Callus sought so dearly will soon become a thing of the past. But rest assured, Nadia, Poisson will always remain a safe haven for you. If you're scared, you can always return there. If anyone dares to lay their hands on you there, the Conferry of Cabriere will use its funds to the last Mora to bring them to justice. Thank you, Uncle Marcel. But I don't intend to go into hiding. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Do you have any new thoughts on my father's case? Ah, <sighs> about that. Sorry, my age is catching up with me. So it'll take me a while to recall my memory. The conferee was responsible for that banquet. So I was out and about the whole time making sure things were running smoothly. I didn't even have the time to drink with the guests. Then I heard the sound of a gunshot. And the rest was history. Oh, it's okay. No need to push yourself. We'll ask around some more. See if there are any valuable clues elsewhere. Sounds good. Just let me know if you ever need more. All my wealth comes from Callus' patronage and support. I'll spend however much it takes to clear his name. We talked to all three suspects, purely based on their conversations with me. None of them sounded particularly suspicious. Mm, I suppose that's to be expected, though. If a single conversation is all that's needed to find them out, then my father wouldn't have needed to investigate the case for so many years. Anyway. Even though we didn't make a breakthrough, let's still compile what we were able to find. Hmm... But where should we start? Ah, you're right! Flora mentioned that Callus probably only ended up with a gun because of circumstance. Hmm... That makes sense. According to Jacques' family members, he already told them that he had been discovered. And then he had no choice before he left home that day. Hmm. If I had to guess, he probably received an order from the Sin Foss to kill my father. Had he refused, he and his family's lives would have been forfeit. So, Jacques fired the first shot? Oh? And why is that? Completed his mission, he'd be of no more use to his boss. 
Huh. So, what would make more sense from his perspective would be to turn his back on the Order and seek protection from my father. Mm, makes sense. But without evidence, that's still just a theory. Besides, Jock, the attack from the Garden Mechs has been bothering me quite a bit as well. It's obvious that our enemy has become more antsy after the secret of the primordial sea water was revealed. Do you think he knew even then that we followed this lead to the end? Given everything that's happened since, uh, it's quite possible. But who among the three suspects would have the ability to control privately owned garden mechs? Uh, hmm. My father did really trust him, and they worked together on a large number of projects. Maybe that's how he got to know Jacques. And with funds from the Comfrey, he could also afford a large number of Gardenex. Still really hard for me to imagine, though. After all, Uncle Marcel has been around since I was just a child. Also, wouldn't this mean he has been spending a whole lot of mora and energy to fight his own sin business? Flora? Uh, it is true that he was closest to my father, and thus had the best chance of learning about his dealings with Jacques. But as soon as he was Sula's advisor, his work mostly deals with personnel and security, so he shouldn't have much means when it comes to finances. So you're saying he's too broke to avoid a mech army? Exactly. He can't. And even if he could, I don't think he would be able to dispatch a whole group so quickly. Thierry, you say? Huh. It is possible that he's figured out a way to convert the garden mechs for personal use. But I didn't feel like he was lying when he was talking to us about the mecha. I also don't think he'd be able to keep that kind of tampering under wraps. Yeah, had he actually tampered with the mecha, we'd be able to prove it with a simple check of the guard's inventory. If the mecha were taken from the guards, it should be pretty easy to find out where and how that happened. <sighs> Who could it be? If you think everything through, Uncle Marcel is indeed the most suspicious of them all. Could we be missing other suspects? Malus didn't know about the people turning into our thing when he narrowed it down to these three, did he? <sighs> Malus has always been very reliable, and his judgment of others' trustworthiness has been fair and well considered. When he laid out his case for the three, the rationale he gave me made a lot of sense as well. The suspect is knowledgeable about the Sphina's internal affairs, has the means to dispatch Mecha to assassinate us, and possesses significant intellect and foresight. <sighs> Even if I don't want to believe it, I'm starting to see how things could all tie back to Uncle Marcel. Well, we still have another trap card on top of all the theorizing and speculating. Yes, Malus did say that charging straight in there would be extremely risky. But we don't have any other options right now. We need far more solid proof before we can hope to go charging in on our enemy. Nomia, here you are. Oh, I have been looking for you. Huh? Aren't you the guy from the guards? Did something happen? Yeah, news came from Erinus just after you left. We've got another trial on our hands. 
Wasn't that place built specifically for holding trials? What's so newsworthy about this one? I know, I know. But they said the person they're putting on trial is a Fatui harbinger called Tartaglia. What? Is that someone you know? He's been accused of being the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. It's absurd, don't you think? Wait, how? None of our investigations have had anything to do with him. That's what I thought was strange about it, so I came to tell you the news right away. If the charge against him stands, then it will be next to impossible to get the guards to support any of our planned investigations. Right, because they'll think they've already found the culprit. Yeah, and it'll, it'll be a lot harder than to clear Mr. Callis' name. Hmm, I understand. <sighs> well, partner, what do you think we should do? We still haven't found any conclusive evidence. about the serial disappearances case, the culprit's attention will be focused on Arrhenius, leaving his home base wide open. You're right. This is our best opportunity. <laughs> All right, then. Let's do this. I'll stall them at the Opera House and charge Marcel as a true culprit. I won't have any chance of making that charge stick, though, unless we find more evidence. It'll be up to you to make it back in time and hand the decisive evidence to me. Please allow us to accompany you. I'm ready. Ah, oh, Luke Silver. When did you two get here? We heard that you will be leaving Poisson and figured that you might require our assistance. It's our hope that your confidence will be bolstered with the two of us by your side. <laughs> Thank you so much. Then, let's make haste for Arrhenius. Paimon, Traveler. I'll see you at the Opera House. See you then! Now that Gabby has set out for Aaron, yes, we should also get going. The location!
Welcome to the Sin Production Base. It sure doesn't seem out of the ordinary at all. Ah, you're right. An important place like this is bound to have a ton of protective measures and mechanisms. Navi is probably arguing up a storm right now to solve for us. Here that I must, must repeat, repeat my question, question again, again, Mr. Tartaglia. Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest, I don't understand your country's complicated court system or the reason why I'm being charged with something I've never even heard of. However, I did hear that people who have been charged can choose to participate in a duel to clear their name. Is, Is that, that right? In, in which case, as long as I accept the charge, I can have an all-out fight with that champion duelist Clorin, right? I've got to admit, that's one of the most enticing offers I've ever received. When I privately sparred with her last time, she was obviously holding back. Real disappointing. Hey! Don't you understand? You're currently the prime suspect for a major case. This isn't the place for you to be looking for fights. Oh? Sounds like the Hydro Archon wants to lecture me on the ways of the Opera House. Then why don't you duel me too? I'm the kind of student that learns best in the heat of battle. Alas, it would appear that communication with the defendant is going poorly. We have made very little progress. In that case, let me explain everything from the very beginning again. The goal of this trial is to determine the culprit behind the serial disappearances case. <laughs> that case had nothing to do with him! You got the wrong man! Huh? What's going on? Why is she interjecting again? <laughs> I, I told you it couldn't be one of the Fatui Harbingers. Miss Navia, this is the second time you've interrupted the court proceedings. I only tolerated your behavior last time because you were able to provide the court with a key eyewitness. But that was an exception rather than standard court protocol. I can very well charge you with contempt of court for your interjections. Oh, please! Did you ever think I had any respect for this place's pointless theatrics? <laughs> we can put that discussion aside for now. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to charge the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. And if my charges prove true, then Tartaglia here will be proven innocent by default, correct? Oh, a young lady has charged in and offered to clear my name. How fascinating. Well, I got, got half bored to death by all these rules and procedures anyway, so I'll take you up on that offer. So, Your Honor, is there nothing else for me to do now? You may take a seat for now in the audience, but that doesn't mean the suspicions against you have been lifted. Now then, Miss Navia, who is the person who would like to charge instead?
Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial. Mr. Marcel, you will not require an attorney, is that correct? Ah, uh, apologies, sir. It all just happened so quickly. I still haven't figured out what's going on. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have now arrived, Miss Navia, please present your charges. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Through elucidating what really happened in that case, can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case? Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I... Uh... Into getting into these specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm <laughs> struggling to remember some details of that case. Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Gardinage. On the day of the murder, Spina de Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Conferee of Cabrera. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callus, holding a gun, while his acquaintance, Jacques, lay dead from a gunshot wound. The guards' investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, or the second must have taken Jacques' life. The suspect did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Loran in the ensuing duel, and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. <sighs> the one who murdered to kill was Jacques, not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. In truth, the third person shot Jacques first, and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. After that, the, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the primordial sea.
assassin, first shot Jock, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead. Testimony of the victim's family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. However, in the end, he reconsidered and instead shared everything with Callus, hoping to seek the latter's protection. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already considered this possibility and had sent out another assassin. Realizing this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques' murder. This is the true version of events. explains Callus's and Jacques' respected motives. I guess they didn't shoot each other after all. Mr. Marcel, you are the one being charged with the crime. You should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence. Ah, but I think I agree with everything Navi just said. In fact, there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me. Then, may I ask two questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. One, do you have the evidence to back up your claims? I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. Considering the serial disappearance case, the guards probably have careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nivellet, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Hmm. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? Maybe she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. My second question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described, then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. I thought about this too, and the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the primordial sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father 
father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina de Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. What was certain, however, was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Moss once told me that the Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. What? If the secret had gotten out, the culprit would have fought in an all-out war with the Spina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? How can a hollow verdict protect anyone? Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. And once I have figured out the truth, and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot, and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say, your father intended to die in the duelist's reign? That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? Yes, I did. As a champion duelist, I've fought, fought many battles, and have taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live, or if they're looking to die. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion and duelist, that, that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. <sighs> Since that's your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. Wait, weren't they just talking about the serial disappearances case? Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. And, at the end of Lenny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. The culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene. Coincidentally, Marcel attended both the banquet and the trial. So that's why you suspected me. <sighs> Even after hearing your reasoning, I still, I still can't, can't help but find, find it a little preposterous. I mean, I'm used, used to it, though. You've always been, been an impulsive and sentimental child, Navia. It's, it's one, one of your most endearing, endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. I will try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh. Oh, what she 
can say that. that. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas, who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah, well, let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson and work in some trade. My business only thrived when I received Talos' patronage. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. Uh, I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. No, it's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? You can also take a look at my border entry records, or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? She got the wrong guy. At this rate, not even convict the falsely accusing him. I think you've done a superb job dissecting your father's feelings at the near the end of his life. But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you learned to be more considerate of his feelings and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me, and it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth, while that same agency has long been taken from them. The people whose families were destroyed by sin abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> Oh, so, so you, you do, do know, know that, that name. I'm merely surprised you suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Whoa! The floor is going up! Is 
Is it because of this mechanism in the middle? That guy really prepared a lot of stuff for this place. The water level is rising! Now we can swim to the top! But this is still a ways away from where we need to go. Stabilize! Solidify! Shine down!
Stabilize. Illusion shattered. I see everything. Wipe out. Though, as expected, the mastermind isn't here. Huh, that's right. Then let's hurry up and find some evidence so we can get back to the Opera House and help Fabia! Callus has passed on to certain members of his organization. The old dog's a real menace to deal with. Even if he abides by 
by the promise he's made to us, he will still have the upper hand. He can act whenever he wants to make our lives miserable. The only option left is to remove him from the picture entirely. I concur. Let's send someone to kill him. He won't declare war as long as we don't touch Navia. Oh, seems like we've got a bunch of correspondence between the higher-ups. What's this over here? Looks like some kind of place for research. Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the Primordial Sea and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the Primordial Sea. Female specimens 22, 23, and 24 were dissolved! <laughs> Sorry, Traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just... that... Paimon's never read something so scary before! How could someone write something that terrible in such a matter-of-fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going! So, that's why he did all of these experiments. But, did he really think he'd be able to find a way just by dissolving people over and over? That's just insane! Huh? Isn't that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought he was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. Ah, <sighs> you mean Bache is the one who did all of these... Uh, experiments? So that's it! Bache was no victim, but personally took his lover and... No, that's not it either! If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? In any case, Paimon will write it all down. Mixing in prop 